totally. totally. People don't talk about that. They don't talk about, they're like, oh yeah, I saw him and it's just like, fucked his brain down. Oh my God, great. Well, keep that up for two years and talk to me. Cause it's yeah. not going to be, you know, the excitement yeah. and like, it's becoming like we're best friends and we're hanging out and mm. we're so making love, but it's a lot more than that. And he makes me laugh and, you know, we're, we're each other's partner. I had to go to a social event. I went to see Luann's cabaret party and I brought him and Jeff Lewis and all my friends were there. My lawyer was there. And Luann's like, Ooh, where'd you get this one? I want one. You know, it was cute. And, you know, he hung with them. He could hang, he could hang with them. He had his own where my exes could not speak, could not talk if they were around people like that. He was like, yeah, which would, and it's funny because he knew the owner of the theater we were in and two of Jeff's best friends used to be friends with him. It was just a six degree kind of thing. So it was mm -hmm. nice to see that he could hang. I put him on my Instagram. He was really funny on my Instagram. It's like, you know, we're proud of each other. Nice. And I think that's also really important that you're proud of your mate and you should put yep. that on your list because Hard. a lot of people focus on the sex and the romance and they don't focus on the every mm -hmm. like like having routines mesh is so much more important so much of the crap that we ask for can yep. do we do we calm each other down when we're stressed do we enjoy each other's company do we just let it flow organically like sometimes I'm like just come over we'll figure out what we're going to do later you know I don't have to yeah. have an every time I go out yeah yeah uh, but I mean I think right. that yeah, I wrote a family man down. I wrote tall, he's six foot one. I wrote in shape. We're both getting really in shape. I think we're both watching our diet and really watching it. We watch each other. We splurge on popcorn once a week at the movie theater. Yeah. I get one of those jobs. And we drink Diet Coke and we, we we feel like we're putting, he ate candy last week at the movies and it was the best candy I ever tasted. I was just like, don't give me that again. <laughs> it was a very long squidgly thing that I was just like, like better than a red vine. And I was just like, ah, you know, I haven't had sugar in forever. And then, um, you know, he's funny, he's witty, he's really good dad, excellent dad, love his kids. He's, and they're older, so that's fun. His, his daughter, love. Um, but he lied to me on two little things, which was a big deal, but I got mad. One was he vapes tobacco. My mother died of cancer. Yeah. That was a, it, and he drinks, but he doesn't drink a lot. He's not an excessive drinker. I mean, compared to UK standards, he's an angel, a pussycat. So I was like, and I don't drink. So it was kind of weird because I was like, all right. And then I watched him and he's a moderate drinker. He's like a normie, they call him a normie. But, you know, I want to get him off the tobacco. You know, we both do gummies at night. We don't smoke weed, but we do gummies. And so, you know, you're not, you're not going to get everything perfectly with somebody. I rather yeah. have, and he's honest. I rather have yeah. honesty with that than the liar who's like Mr. Healthy, like I was. Yeah. Yeah. So, so take your list. This is something I teach everyone in my, in my seminars. Take your list of three of the most significant relationships. You're going to make a column at the top, Mark, John, Steve, whatever. You're going to write all the positive things. Then you're going to write all the negative things. And in each column of the positive, there's going to be a, like a consistency of one thread that you like the most. And then the same thing in the negative. Okay, so if he's cheap, probably all three were cheap. If he was generous, all three were generous. You see what I'm saying? Then you put those, those two things together and you start to go, what do I want from this? So I said to him, what do you want? We have, we're, gonna make, we're gonna play a game this weekend, which is called the fives. We each make five things we want in a relationship we never got before and we discuss it. Okay, nice. So but in order to get to the fives, you need to see what was the positive and what was the negative and what was missing. So you get into that place of the, if you can only have five things, what would your top five things be? And then you have to speak it to, to the person that you're in a relationship with, gay or straight, doesn't matter. And they have to listen and process and give you communication back. And you have to do the same thing. You do this after dinner in a quiet setting. You want to get a glass of wine. You want to settle in, sit on the couch and snuggle. But it's going to bring you closer together if you do it right. Mm. When they, they, every person you're in a relationship should want to make you feel good, just like you want to make them feel good. And yeah. I don't, they're not out of range. Like if your language of love is gifts, you have to ask for gifts. It's very uncomfortable because I my second language is gifts. You have to say, look, I like it when you go to the Dodger game and bring me a hat, which he did. I like when you... Um, 
you know, you're, you're looking for things for my birthday and asking me what I want. Like, I like knowing that you're going to pick up a tchotchke here and there. Okay. So there's that, right? Then um, on my love language of touch, I love when you touch me. I love when you cuddle with me. I love when you kiss me. So now he's like touch. We're both touch. He's more, I think, I don't know. I think he's more acts of service. He would probably say he's more affirmations, but I think he's acts of service. He likes when I do little things from like his shirts yeah. had a hole in his sleeve and I took it to the cleaners and I, and I had it sewn up, you know, little things, but yeah. the five is so important, especially at the top of the relationship. Now you're in a relationship and it's gone sideways. You can't seem to get back the rhythm of the beginning. This will bring you back together. Nice one. Yeah, and nice. you, can also, you can also add a memory stone to it. Like each of you gives a, what was your favorite thing we did together? So he'll say something, you'll say something and you'll all go into that. Oh yeah, I remember we took that trip to Maui and we were in the waterfalls making love. Oh, remember how you, I love the way you held my hand and you know, took me up the mountain. Like you describe it, like it's a movie. Mm -hmm. He will get into the feeling place and want to give you more if you do it right. Nice. That's something I teach in my, especially couples in my seminars who've lost the zhuzh because yeah. they can't seem, they mm -hmm. think that like if they met in high school or college, they're going to try to go back to when they were 20 somethings and they're 60. And I'm like, dude, you're not getting back to your twenties. But what you're getting back to is the way that person makes you feel mm -hmm. not so much that experience, but the way did they make you feel safe? Did they make you feel loved? Did they make you feel like king of the mountain? Whatever it is, you want to make them feel that way and they want to make you feel that way. And that is a gift that is priceless. Mm. Oh, so, so, so great. And so many nuggets for people that are still looking to manifest love and really struggling. I'm I gonna put down, I'm gonna put down below everything that you've mentioned for people to click on and go and have a look. And Let's talk about the SP before you close out. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm not a fan of the SP. I know that's really, Ines is an expert on it. I'm not a fan of it. She had gone through an SP experience with her boyfriend, even though he really wasn't the SP, he really was in it, but they were long distance. So the SP situation creates a, a wedge when you're long distance. You don't know what the person's doing. You don't know if they can stay in it much longer because you know if they were. She was in U, He was in UK and she was in Australia. So yeah. And you also feel like um, desperate when you don't hear from them or the consistency drops. They're coming, coming, coming. Then they drop. And you're like, what the fuck? Where'd they go? They were all over me. So you're confused because you don't see them every day and they don't mm. live in the water. Okay. So I understand a lot of you have SPs. I had them. The last one was an SP, the one that cheated on me. When we broke up, I still wanted him because we were best friends at that point. And he became an SP when I met the girlfriend, obviously. So I think if you were to take the SP, the good, the bad, the ugly, and then realize why you're not getting it. Like in my case, I was lied to. I was gaslit mm -hmm. and lied to. Okay. So if you're not getting the SP, like he's weak, he's weak. He's a weak man. He isn't showing up like the way he, he says he is. I don't think you sit there and compare yourself to the people in their lives or their ex-girlfriends or the present ones that they're dating or whatever their situation is, because I think that's going to make you crazy. And if you do that, you're going to spin, 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 and lose out on the good ones, the good opportunities. I think you take the list of what you like in the SP and add it to the new list. And you don't have to close the door and say, I'm never talking to you again. I'm blocking you on Instagram. I'm unfollowing you. You don't have to do any of that shit. You don't have to go crazy. You just let it sit dormantly and continue on with your desire. If they show up and they come back to you, they must make a commitment. This is, the, this is where it separates the boys from the men, okay? Mm -hmm. The men are going to want a commitment like a Nescot. Come to London, we'll figure it out, and boom, it was done. That's what was written, okay? But if they can't commit to you, they're not the right person. Because I don't care how great an SP is, he, they have to commit to you. So it has to be like, I'm so busy looking for love. It's great if he comes back, he's with his girlfriend, he's traveling the world, he doesn't have time for a relationship. And then he comes back because you're focusing on others because the switch will go off. 
you will get it. You will get a phone call, a text, or an email. The switch will go off. But when he comes back to you, you must determine and set the playing field of what you want, and that is commitment. Mm. You can't spend another day wasting your mind on someone who's not in the game with you. They got to be all in or nothing. Because I'm not a fan of just wasting your life on an SP. Yeah, I've done it. So I've done it, and it has been nothing yeah. but a waste of time. I did yeah. it with my ex-boyfriend in Florida. He came back and he wasted my time because he wouldn't give me a commitment. So, and I went out with him for four years on again and off again. So I know what it feels like, but when you meet the person that's all in like my new boyfriend, it is completely worth that fucking crazy motherfucker ride because it shows mm. you how you are the jewel to be adorned. You are the one and there's no greater feeling than being claimed. That SP is going to waste your fucking time. If you're in a twin flame situation, which I was also, I was in a twin flame situation too, doesn't mean you're meant to be together. Doesn't mean you're meant to be married in this lifetime. Meant to be that they woke you up to show you what's possible, but you're on to another who's on the same frequency, who wants the same things. If they don't want the same things of you, it can't work. It defies law. I don't care how great they are. Grab mm. people fall from the sky. It doesn't matter. They have to want what you want and they have to be dedicated to the cause to make it happen. Remember, love is an action, not a, not a word. And I think that's really important. So mm -hmm. SP, it's not like a nest is not gonna teach you what to do to the SP, but so many you are bent on the SP. You can't see yeah. the forest from the trees. Yeah. And you can get in a real deep cycle of suffering with that if it goes on too I long. Was. I was, yeah. in you got me out of suffering. I was yeah. crying every fucking day going, why did he do that? Because they're a mystery. Yeah. A lot of times yeah. these are mysteries. You can't figure it out and you're not stupid. It's because they know to play this game. Most SP people who do this constantly, give you a breadcrumb here and there, are masters at it. They're almost like sociopaths. They know how to play the game and you're an innocent victim and you're just like, you've been bitten by Dracula and you want more. That's basically what it is because they're succubuses. They're vampires, psychic vampires. They mm -hmm. live off of the prey that they could get you at any time, which makes them feel good so that you're building them up for them to go off to meet another. Otherwise, they would have claimed you. Yeah. I'm glad you shared both the SP and the non-SP because it's a real fork in the road on this topic constantly on YouTube do you go for the new relationship or do you keep working on the SP? And there's no right or wrong, but there is a lot of potholes. So it's good to be time aware wasting. of the potholes. Time wasting. Yeah. Time, they're time wasters. Because yeah. think about how much time you wasted thinking about him. And I did it for yeah. nine months. Yeah. I could have been in a now, if you want to waste time in your 20s, no yeah, problem. All the time in the world. But once you hit 50, 45, 55, 65, you're running out of time. Right. And the one thing that I will say is when the new one shows up, you appreciate them more because it's almost like you forgot you did all that. It's like, um, yeah. Uh, Marissa said to me, when you meet the man, Patty, I remember forgetting this. When you meet the man, you'll forget you were ever single. The pain yeah. and the suffering you cause. And it's like almost like childbirth. Why do women have more than one child? If that yeah. was the most painful experience they ever had, they forget it. You know, there's like that drug that you take when you forget you're having surgery. I forget what it's called. It starts with a P, you know, that Michael Jackson took and everything. It's almost mm. like you took that drug and you forgot that yeah. you were pining away for some asshole for 100,000 years. And mm. then you're like off with the new one. You're like, wait a second, it's so easy now. I can't yeah. know how easy it is now. I, I don't know. worry where he is. I don't worry. I had a little PTSD in the first month. Like, you know, is this for real? Am I being ghosted? It's too, mm -hmm. I remember thinking it's too easy. Yes. A challenge. I'm a, you know, I've got Venus and Aries for those who are astrologers and I love a challenge. So it was like, wait a second. He was straight. He has like a million planets in Scorpio. So he was like, this is who I am. I'm not changing. Remember they're fixed signs. And yeah. um, I kept thinking like, why is it so easy? Why? Why didn't this happen before? And I had, yeah. it, it, there had been something that triggered in my brain. I could care less. 
And then when I started to enjoy dating just for the sake of dating, which is what Pat Allen talks about, Dr. Pat Allen, who was one of my mentors talks about duty dating, just getting out of the house and having fun. And I got to pick the restaurant or I got to pick the concert or, the, mm. or I picked someplace in LA I had never been to. And then I started to look at the experiences. I teach all my girls, take 10 things you would like to do in your town you've never done. And when the guy says, what do you want to do? Because they're idiots, they don't know. You just say here. And if the date goes bad, you just got something out of it. On my second yeah. date with my ex, we went to the Getty to see the Herb Ritz exhibit, which I was dying to see. And it was very hard to get tickets. And my ex got him because he was like, he was into photography. And so we went to see it. And I'll never forget that because, you know, that was a once in a lifetime thing. And I had the best time ever. And the byproduct was I got my boyfriend out of it. But you need to make things that make you feel good that you're interested in. If it's an exhibit, a, a, a show, a concert, a restaurant, a bar, whatever it is, you know, like a street festival, make that list. Yeah. And then utilize it because then you're going to forget about your SP or the fact you don't have love because you're in the moment enjoying something you want to do, like taking a mm. cooking class, trying to play tennis or skiing, whatever it is. And that person is going to show up regardless if it's the date you have or even somebody yeah. you know. Yeah. Right. And it's, it's, you're pulling right away from that intense dissatisfaction of, I haven't got, I haven't got, I haven't got, I want more, I want more, I want more. You're pulling right away from that. You're going to enjoy yourself. You let go and then the thing comes. Right. So the other thing is that we did this trick. Okay. So I'm going to Hawaii. Sheila and I are playing and I'm the, the spoken word. So I'm spoken word, whoever's spoken word gets a little bit more powerful because spoken word really moves the energy versus just visualizing and feeling. And he couldn't spoken word it. I did would you know, show up at the slavage palatial mansion. There's a pool, food, butler service, whatever it is. Okay. We played the Neville Goddard game, which is the one where he's in his chair in his, in his bedroom or living room. And then yeah. he needs to go to a place that he wants to be. And you can use it for money. You can use it for health. This isn't just for love. And we played that game to the point where I forgot where we were in reality. Was I in my bed or was I in Hawaii? I yes. felt Hawaii so strong. Now, the reason I felt Hawaii so strong is I've been to Hawaii. I know what it smells like. I know what it tastes like. I know what the food's indigenous to the, to the island are. I love Maui. So I got to this place where I forgot where I was. Yeah. Because I was repeating it over and over again. And then it started to summon energy, you know, yeah. and it started to pull that love in because in the, in the story, the person loved me and adored me and there was no other, there was yeah. no, other. I was his dream girl. And that's yeah. kind of what you need to do. You need to process it out. And I remember like every other day we would do it. And like, she will call me, my friend who lives in Vermont, he's a guy. And he would say like, let's play Hawaii. And we would look forward to it. We would make the time of the <laughs> night and then we would fall asleep. Now he falls asleep a little later than me. So I would literally summon it at 11, like a little wicked witch, you know, like a little witch. And then I would fall asleep and I'd have dreams of it coming. I'd see different men or I'd see a man grabbing and touching me, kiss me. So I knew that you know, according to Neville's system, as well as Edgar Casey, that the universe was guiding me to the right place. Mm. And it's not gonna, it might take a minute, like, like Vicky's took a minute. She took a minute, I took much longer. Um, I probably know too much. And this is her, you know, beginner's luck, first time at that. So yeah. I had a little bit more, well, it didn't work before. And I've tried this, with this but she was like, I got nothing to lose. And yeah. she believed the power of prayer. So if she yeah. prayed for it, God heals, which is great. Mm -hmm. you know, you're a Christian, you want to do that. Jew, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So yeah. I think the key was, is that every single time we did it, not only did we look forward to it, we forgot where our physical body was. That's yes. miraculous, by the way. Do you remember when you were doing that a lot? Yeah. I remember you and I talking and I said to you, you got to, your body's here in your bed you launch your spirit to Hawaii. And then while you're in Hawaii, you got to look back at yourself on the bed. And you said, yeah, I don't want to come back to my bed. And you didn't want to come, your spirit didn't want to come back right. here. Like my boyfriend is a really good business and he's super smart, but he could be richer. 
And he's brilliant in business, but he took over his father's business at one point. And I said, how come you're richer? And it stuck with him. So today in the morning, he says, it's so weird that you said that because I wonder why I'm not. I said, what if I taught you how to manifest money? Yeah. And so we're playing manifestation money games right now where he's saying at least 500 times a day, I'm a multimillionaire now, I'm a multimillionaire now. I am doing the same thing where I'm visualizing me depositing the check into the bank. Like, like you can do it with money, you could do it with yeah. health. You're not feeling good right now. Remember when you did feel good. I mean, mm. there, there are moments when I'm having, you know, gynecological problems downstairs, UTIs, whatever. And I remember what I was like in my 30s where I was like a size two and I was sleeping with my boyfriend. And, you know, we were, we were like, I think we even had a swing at one point. He was a little into sex, but I was like, you know, doing crazy shit. And I remember what it felt like because that, if I took out my whole life, my 30s were my favorite period, really. Mm. And I would get, and you know, menopause, I would take back my period just to have more estrogen. So I mm. have to remember that. And then I say, I'm in perfect health. I'm in perfect health now. And it dissipates what my problem is. Like, I'll literally go to the doctor and she'll go, wait a second, you had a UTI bacteria, it's gone. You didn't even take antibiotics, what happened? And it's because I'm, I'm telling my cells to turn on. Well, it's the yeah. same with your subconscious. You're, if your subconscious believes it, it's not like just law of attraction. It's like an animal in the wild. When those lions signal the lioness to come walk by, mm. have a bachelor event and pick the, give the final rose to the lioness, it's their smelling and signaling. It's no different for a human being to do the same thing. We're animals, but we don't yeah. talk. About that. That's what the pheromones do. They're signaling for you. And it's up to you to choose wisely who shows up. You'll mm. get that or the girls but then you got to choose who's the right mate for you because they're all going to want to touch you and be with you yeah and, and i think that's important that we it's all in the subconscious if we learned the brain problems you know like dr amen talks about and so many of like you know joe dispense and all them they're all talking about bruce wilton changing your brain to get to the place you need to be and i'm not saying take ayahuasca or mushrooms or anything i'm talking about you doing it naturally so it becomes the norm versus the other way. Then life can anything's possible. Really. Yeah. Possible. yeah. I'm not saying you're gonna want to run the you know the Olympic five meter and you have no legs. I'm not talking about that, that you wouldn't be drawn to that anyway. Whatever you're drawn to is naturally going to show up. And there's gonna be nuggets and signs of land. It might be a big thing like winning the lottery. You know, that's not yeah. so quick. Because you've never won the lottery before. You don't know what it feels like unless you won the, I mean, there are people online who've won the lottery three times because they know the vibration of winning the lottery. There are those people, but not most people can do that. I think yeah. the secret is to focus in on one thing that you really want. And if love is what you want, I made it a full-time job for a year. Yeah. This yeah. or anything else. If I was invited to a party and I, I didn't want to go, I pushed myself out of the house to meet people who could introduce the other people if i was in a place of slump depression i mean holidays are killer christmas new year's valentine's day just shoot me right now i need yeah. effort to still go visit family and friends and have a thanksgiving dinner and you no know, next year because it comes every year my mate will be with me and yeah. i i remember going to thanksgiving dinner and my best friend was really in love with this guy she met on tinder they actually just moved in this week she brought her whole family at, and I was the only single person. But instead of depressing, I watched them interact and said, I want that. So yeah. instead of getting mad at like all those around you, like your sister's getting married or, you know, your, your boyfriend's out with a new girl and you saw him, visualize in your mind what you want, but then look for evidence of other people who have it and say, I want yeah. that. Because then you can, I'm a target person. I have to see the target to make it happen. Because yes. a lot of people can't visualize. They just can't visualize. Mm. You know? And there, it's a lot of, like, they think they're doing it wrong. There's no wrong way, by the way. And this feeling, like, you have to feel in order to make it manifest is bullshit, too. That's mm. another. It's easier. It's easier to feel and make it happen. You know, like Shelly's system. But you yeah. are much more business-like. So we can actually affirm it and yeah. visualize it and make it happen. Yeah, yeah. I kept saying, I'm happily married now. I'm happily married now. And I would walk around. I would do four to eight miles a day walking and say, I'm happy. Yeah. 
exactly married. Listen to music, sing along with the music and use those words. Or I yeah. would say, I'm in, a, I'm in the healthiest relationship I've been in. You know, my man loves me, adores me. Like I would do stuff like that all day long. And I'd make it like my job. You know, my, we were slow in business at the beginning of the year. And like the month of January and February, I took time off to work on me. And it, it, it worked, it yielded. And also I was getting out of a relationship. So I yeah. had to clean the debris up. For, yeah. Think about how many times you've been in a relationship and you're not really clean for the next one because you mm. didn't work. He even said to me when he broke up with the girl, the ex, he said to me, I didn't do the 90 day detox. He had read my book. And I said, well, that's really important because you probably, you picked me and you probably have a lot of crap on you. That's still, you know, it's like dead weight. Yeah. And, and, and you've got, you're infested. You've got a, you've got a, a virus basically. Yeah, exactly. I think looking back at the last, well, since I've known you, the things that you did that you really honed in on was really short tight affirmations and the the process of going to Hawaii and not your body not coming back to this here and now I think those were the two most potent focused and powerful things for you oh one other thing I want to talk about is how you learned from your previous relationships to the present so the Mm. last relationship I had was not physically my type and yet I was still attracted to him this one is more my type uh, more my look, but not everything's perfect. So what I learned is that you'll make this wish list like weird science and you'll put it to the floor. If you ignore the people that show up because you're so religious to the list, mm. you will lose out. You will lose out. You have to be, you have to like go to this place of what do I feel like when I'm with that person? How do they treat me? Yeah. And then give them a chance to show. Yes. Because if you're so like, you know, I want Brad Pitt, you're going to be fucked. And there yeah. are women that do this and they're still in their 60s holding out for like Mr. Private Plane. You know yeah. I mean? Because I see this yeah. with my clients and I'm like, you're being ridiculous. You know yeah. what I mean? What, if I give you a guy that makes a decent living, that's not good enough. Like they have to have Richie, Richie McRitchie or they have to look that, like a 10, like hot. I've had A-list celebrities call me and say, I need this, this. I said, we're, you know, we're just the distributor of the product. We're not the manufacturer. So, yeah. I mean, and I tell them they're crazy. So yeah. I don't want to see anyone lose out because the universe still has game. It's still going to surprise you. Like it surprised me last time, which yeah. means you're more open to this guy. Yes. Maybe yes. Like, he's not cutting in shape. Like I used to date bodybuilders. Like, and so I thought, oh, that's really interesting. You might have to sacrifice one thing to get another. Maybe he's not yeah. in shape, but he's super generous and kind and loving. Mm-hmm. Like, always get him in shape. Like think exactly. About that. I did, exactly. I did, we had to go to an event and I hated his clothes because they were too big because he lost so much weight. So we went shopping together and I picked out his wardrobe and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. He gave mm. me two hours and I did it in 45 minutes and he was in shock. He's like, let's do that again. Today he was wearing <laughs> some of the clothes. I was like, oof, you look so hot. So yeah. there's that. Also, I think it's important to realize that um, try a different person out. Stick, stick to one type forever. You're going to see mm. try somebody new out who can teach you something and see how yeah. you I have a friend who's blue collar, lives in Washington state. Um, she grew up on a farm. She worked in LA as a nurse and I haven't talked to her in a really long time. And she contacted me the other day to tell me that she had found love because she read my book. And I said, what happened? She goes, it's really interesting. She goes, she went to New York city for a, an event, a nurse's convention. And she left the convention to go to this fancy restaurant on Fifth Avenue and she had martinis by herself because it said, go out, you know, look, those are travel and packs, do not attract. And she met this wealthy Englishman who was visiting for a week. And she turns out he's like mega wealthy, like owns like an estate and has servants and it's like Downton Abbey. And she's this little blue collar nurse farmer that went all the way to England recently and said to me, I'm getting married. And I said, I'm moving to London. And I said, what are you talking about? She goes, 
So I met him at the bar. We started to date. He flew me over three times. I fell in love with London. I'm quitting my job. I'm not going to be a nurse. And I'm going to help him grow his business. He has some kind of business. He's in the agricultural field, which was really weird. They have that in common. And I said, are you kidding me? And she goes, no, and you have to visit. And it's this palatial estate like Downton Abbey, which she knows I love Downton Abbey. And I was like, here's the little city mouse, you know, meaning the country <laughs> mouse. And they're like, so she got out of her own way because she only dated farmers when she lived back, you know, in Seattle. She only dated, um, she didn't date doctors, but she dated orderlies, you know, people that didn't make a lot of money, I would say. And she never really thought of herself as dating. Yeah. She never even, it never even occurred to her. She didn't even, I said in the back of mind, did you wish it? She goes, yeah, I wished it, but I didn't think it would happen. So sometimes, because I don't know the manifestation process we learn, these are regular people. And so yeah. uh, she fantasized about it, watch movies about it, rom-coms and things like that. Yes. And it happened. Nice. Yeah. It's very, she's like, I'm completely different than him. We're opposites. We are very attracted to each other, but we come from, from two different worlds. You know, he's yeah. a suit guy and she's a jeans and t-shirt girl. It's like completely opposite. And she's not gorgeous. He's super handsome. I saw pictures of him. She's like, not gorgeous. And she, they just connected. And she was at the bar by herself and her, I teach people to wear red. She was in a little red dress with heels. And she yeah. had a tea and she said, I'm going to do what Patty teaches. It was really funny, actually. Yeah. So think about that. Like, what are you, what are you uh, going to do? That's going to yeah. get out of your own way. Are you going to plan a solo trip? Are you going to go to a restaurant by yourself? Are you going to take a walk in a new neighborhood? Are you going to take your mm. dog to a new dog park? Like, what are you doing to shake that tree? I was just on Betch's podcast and the host was bitching to me. He can't find love and he wants a Jewish girl and he loves Kim Kardashian's look. Well, I said, well, you like Persians. You need to go to an, oh, he's Jewish. You can only date Jews. I'm, you need to go to an Onyx Shabbat where a temple is that's Sephardic. Oh, no, no, that would be, whatever you try. I don't want a religious girl. I said, no, you can get a, a reform girl. Find a reform temple like this and start going there and doing their social functions. And I heard 16 reasons why he can't. Not like, I'll try that. Yeah. And now he's, he's like, he just thinks it's going to show up. Well, great. If you're manifesting maybe, but he does nothing. So we always teach manifest, but then if you feel it, take the action to support it because you're yeah. helping the universe along its way. You can't just sit back and expect the man to show up at your door. That's ridiculous. That's right. That's right. You've got to fertilize the ground and, and yeah, someone just saying no, 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 isn't really helping right. themselves. And the one thing yeah. that I, one thing that I teach women is that if he's not in your neighborhood, go two neighborhoods over. Yeah. He doesn't live near me. He lives on the east side of LA in Echo Park, but he doesn't live near me. His business is in Echo Park. Like, I don't think we would have ever met had I not gone on Tinder, to be honest yeah. with you. Yeah. Uh, so honestly, so wonderful. I'm so thrilled and it's just, it's such a steep learning curve. And once you get there, you just go, I get it now. I get it. I get it. I get it. But you have to go through what you have to go through. And I think letting go and allowing is part of the most difficult things to learn and letting go of dissatisfaction and trying to make it happen. It's, it's the most challenging part, but that's, I think, where the magic is. I think the secret is to enjoy dating. Yeah. Be one thing, enjoy that people are taking you out, buying mm. dinner, going to the theater, going to events, and enjoy that it's just for the evening. And with no yeah. expectation, I'm getting in the house, I get to put a pretty little dress on, I get to smile and have a martini. I'm not paying for anything. So yeah. enjoy dating. That's yes. the whole key. And then when yeah. you enjoy it, the right person shows up. Yeah. Because that's what happened. I started to I started to relax into it, enjoy it. Yeah. I would like I remember I, I had this favorite salad at this restaurant and I made every date take me to this restaurant. <laughs> Finally, I feel like they should have named the salad after me. So um yeah, so I was like excited to eat the salad more than even to see the guy. It's so stupid. Yeah. Nice. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Oh. Patty, I'm so, honestly, I'm just so, so wrapped for you. And you and I have actually 
not going to say too much today, but you and I have actually created something that we will announce shortly, very soon. Yeah, but everything that we've talked about, I'll put links down below. And thank you for coming on and giving you time to help people that are still at that fork in the road and really struggling. So let me, let me just tell you something. Yeah. There, this system works. If you do the system that we're going to be doing, if you do the system that um, we've created for you, I'm yeah. living proof, you're living proof. Yeah. There are hundreds of thousands of people that Ines has taught that, you know, I'm just putting a little bit more to it a little more brass tax facts because I'm one of those that likes application and I like processes and I don't like to sit back and go namaste woohoo here it is um, yeah. so if you do this system if you use my pheromone like it's party with the purpose these things are going to shift your consciousness because yes. you're stuck if you wouldn't you wouldn't be listening to this if you weren't stuck exactly stuck. right exactly you know? right so. let, us, let us get you love so that you no longer have to be lonely, single, the last person at the party who has no one to go home with, you know, another wedding where you're single at the wedding and they put you at the dunce table, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, like yeah. let us get you to where you need to be, basically. Yeah. So you want to say, say any goodbye, last words to okay, so the people watching? Could, yeah, if I could give you any last words, Love can happen at any age. My mother yeah. was married three times. I'm not young. So I don't want you thinking you're not good enough. You're not young enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not smart enough. You're not rich enough. Whatever your issue is, you can have what you want if you just believe. Nice. Nice. Yes. Another just beautiful success story working on the self and learning and applying not just learning applying 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 it will get you to where you want to go so thank you patty and thank you everybody for joining us and we will let you know what's on the horizon very soon lots of love everyone and i'll see you in the next youtube